Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo here, back in the wood shop today, and uh, this is episode four of the Sexy Lixi Art Deco inspired digital clock series. Now, there are three previous episodes in this playlist, which you can go back and check if you like. The first two of those deal with making the edge lit displays, which are going to fill this rectangular space here. The third episode in the series was getting the clock case to this stage. Now, this is uh, a replica of a, an Art Deco style clock and it takes a lot of its cues and its design form from the Art Deco period. The clock itself is made from medium density fiberboard and that might seem like an odd choice for a clock that would have been designed back in the 1930s. However, if I was to use solid wood for this, there's always going to be some places on the frame where you're going to see end grain and I didn't want that. And it was quite common for furniture back in the 1930s to be made of plywood and use decorative veneers for its outer covering. The veneer that I've got for this is a Queensland walnut veneer. It's a beautiful wood. What I have to do in this episode though is to get this veneer to wrap around this form. There's several ways this could be done. Uh, the most common method when you're dealing with curves in veneer work is to use a vacuum bag. Now I've got one, but it doesn't lend itself to working with these very deep forms like this. Uh, it tends to buckle up a lot and it doesn't want to drape over that form and then suck down the vacuum to hold the veneer closely to that form. The other method would be to use a hide glue, which is put on hot and as a liquid state, and then you rub the veneer with a veneer hammer until the glue starts to cure. And that's probably the most traditional way of doing it. Now the method I'm going to use is none of those things. I'm going to be using a combination of just direct clamping pressure and also some flexible coils to try and pull that veneer hard against that surface there. What we're looking at here now is the back of the clock frame and uh, this is going to have uh, this large rectangular hole here so I can get access to the back of the Lixie displays and also the microcontroller is going to go in this little pocket here. This will later on be covered up by a, a large flat panel just to keep the back of the clock closed and get uh, or protect it from dust and so on. Now the veneer has been cut from several pieces and taped together just so that I don't waste too much veneer. I could have just made a single sheet and then cut the hole out later but this veneer is a bit expensive so I was just being a bit stingy. Now I know people are going to be looking at this and saying ha you idiot you should not use masking tape to hold your pieces of veneer together. And there is a special tape you can buy, which is a gummed paper tape. And uh, it has lots of advantages, the main one being that it's easy to get off later. You just moisten it and it will come away from the veneer. Now, a simple thing is I don't have any. Um, I did buy a roll, but it got moist in the wet season and it ruined it. You can use masking tape, but it tends to stick very well. And uh, getting it off later means that uh, you can sometimes tear up the, the veneer or tear the grain when you remove the tape. I know that um, if that happens you can use a, use a cabinet scraper to get it off and it works. So um, it's a case of just going with what I've got. So that's sort of already sized and ready to go in place and to do the, the clamping process I've just got a piece of chipboard and I've got several sheets of newspaper here and the purpose of that is to give you a slightly resilient surface to clamp against. Now. Because of the way I made this, I can't be absolutely sure that the back of this clock is dead flat. And if I weren't using this newspaper, there's a chance that one or two corners might be sitting tight against the board and the others might be a bit loose. So the newspaper just gives you that little bit of flex and accommodates the, the differences in height. It also prevents gluing your job to the baseboard and it also absorbs uh, moisture from the glue as well so it uh, doesn't tend to stay wet while you've got it clamped up. The glue that I'm using here is a tight bond product uh, and it's called cold press for veneer and uh, it's basically only for this purpose you can't use it for general cabinet making work. Just want to be a little bit vigilant, make sure you haven't left any voids in the glue film.
Just been around, checked all of these edges of the veneer and made sure I've got overhang all the way around, inside and out. I uh, just wanted to be sure nothing slipped when I inverted that, so I think we're good to go and get the clamps on. Okay, that's uh, tightened down. You, you don't really want to overdo it. Um, as long as you see the glue film starting to squeeze out along the edge there, and you've got a uniform squeeze out, it's, it's okay. Uh, if you over tighten, you're going to stress the frame, and there's also a chance that you're going to completely drive out the glue film. This stuff takes about an hour to cure. Uh, on a day like today, that, yeah, about an hour is fine. Well, this is the one that I clamped up about an hour ago. Alrighty, let's see what we got. Okay, I'm happy with that. So the next step is to trim all the excess veneer off and get rid of the tape. So with this tape, it's surprising that um, how sticky it becomes. And as long as you peel it back on itself, it's usually okay. And you, you really need to stop as soon as you see some grain lifting and then come at it from the opposite direction. So if you look really carefully, you can sometimes see a little bit of the grain stuck to the tape. But just take it slow. So you can see there, right on the edge, a little bit of the wood grain stuck to the edge of the tape there. Maybe you can't see that. So there it is there. But that's the overhanging veneer that's going to get trimmed off anyway, so I'm not bothered. To uh, trim off this excess veneer now, there's two different ways you can do it. You can either just leave it flat on the board like I've got there, take a sharp knife and make sure the blade's extending a fair way and then run the blade against that vertical surface. Oh, I can hear the thunderstorm outside. <laughs> now, although it's quick and dirty, uh, the downside with that is that the timber may decide to fracture along the grain line and it may fracture back underneath that surface there. In which case, um, when you turn it over, you notice that there's a raggedy bit that's missing. So the other option is to use a veneer saw. So a veneer saw has a flat back with no set on the teeth on that side there. And uh, the idea is that you can run it flat against that vertical surface there. And although it's slow, it's relatively trouble free. Personally, I just think this is too much work. So at the end of the day, I tend to go with the knife. The other thing is don't try and cut all the way through in one pass. And sometimes when you're pulling the blade off this corner here, it'll tend to break away. So you can either go almost all the way to the end and then reverse the blade and come back. So you just pull the blade back away from that corner. 
There's still a little bit of veneer protruding from that edge, but that's a good thing. I can sand that back now and it'll be fine. Well, I've sort of got to the point now where I need to put this veneer on this top surface of the clock frame and it's got to go around this curved corner here. Now, I started this process about two days ago and my original plan was to have this piece of veneer long enough to go all the way along the top, around the curve and down to this corner here. And the notion was that I was going to use a piece of polystyrene foam over the top of the veneer and some newspaper. So the newspaper is going to go on top of the veneer first, then the polystyrene foam, and then a piece of this material. This is called bending ply. And it's only got three laminations. The middle lamination is very, very thin. And the idea is that if you cut it the correct way, it will bend and flex very easily. So I figured that this was going to be the, uh, the stiff outer skin. Uh, I could then use some clamps on the flat bits and I was going to use a strap clamp to pull it around the curve. And in theory, it sounded perfect. Now in practice, I tried this and it was an unmitigated disaster. What happened was that I had so many layers of stuff that I had to look after. The veneer slipped sideways and exposed an edge just here, which I didn't see until it was too late. The polystyrene foam is its sort of flexible and it, and it sort of gives a bit when you put pressure on it. But the problem is that at the corners, the strap clamp squished it so flat that it was starting to bend the veneer. and. Uh, you know, the end result was that uh, I took it out of the, the call and it looked okay uh, and I immediately spotted this problem here which sort of meant that it was ruined. I couldn't go any further with it but I also found that it hadn't fully adhered on this corner here and there was a bit of a gap underneath there so end result was that I planed all of that veneer off and uh, I had to rethink my strategy. So. What I've done, and I've, I've already done this on the other clock, so I sort of know that it works. So there's the other clock frame finished now, and the, the veneer is nice and tight around that curve. It's sort of it's all worked out. So the plan in that case was that I put the veneer on in two pieces. So what I'll do is I'll glue this part down to the flat section first and stop just short of the curve at this end. Get that cleaned off and that way it's, it's easy to handle, it's, uh, it's, you don't have to do too many things at once. And to go around the curve then, I'll do that as a separate piece. I'm still using the, the bending ply as a call to pull that around. I can get a G-clamp on the flat bit and a G-clamp on the flat bit here. Still using the strap clamp, but the material that I'm putting between the, the bending ply and the veneer is this stuff. It's like a resilient, uh, thin foam. I think they sell this for uh, tool trays and that sort of thing. And it's good. It's thin enough that it sort of puts ample pressure on the veneer. It's very, very flexible. It's not too hard to get it all in place. So that's the plan. And uh, what I need to do now is to get this veneer cut just short of the tangent line where it begins the curvature. So I'm just going to cut this here. And we'll get this all prepped and ready to go. Okay, so I got the glue on there. You just got to be a little bit um, mindful to keep it neat. You don't really want glue running down the face of your, your job. So I'm going to put this piece on. Stop just at that pencil mark, the tangent mark. And make sure it's overhanging at the other end, just a fraction. And just so it doesn't sort of slip and slide all over the place, which it can do, that glue film sort of makes it quite slippery. And when you go to clamp it up, it can skid and skew. And if you're not vigilant and check it, it can end up being pulled back from an edge. Now just here, I don't want any of that excess glue to be there. So I'm just going to clean that off as best I can. So I'm going to be butting another piece of veneer into that later. Alright, so a couple of sheets of newspaper. Oh, 
forgot something. Sorry. Forgot to put that there. Although, having said that, probably just the newspaper would do the same job. Okay, a couple of clamps. And this is where it can all go pear shaped because as you're tightening this clamp, if it's not absolutely perpendicular, it will pull the coil and maybe the veneer sideways. So I just usually just nip the clamps off but don't over tighten them. And then just do a visual check. So what you're looking for is just looking underneath here. So you want to be seeing the, the veneer protruding from that edge and the glue's film starting to squeeze out. Just make sure you got your call parallel to that front face, which I haven't. A good round the back, you can see the glue film starting to squeeze out there. And I usually don't wipe off the glue film, I just leave it. So just progressively tighten your clamps. And that foam material will compress and keep the veneer in good contact with the substrate. Alright, so that is a lot easier to manage than trying to worry about a flexible coil and strap clamps and um, you know, making sure nothing slips and slides and so on. So at least that part is done and um, when I go to add the curved part, you know, I've got something a little bit more manageable. You can sort of run your hand over that straight after you've taken the clamps off and you can tell whether it's bonded or not. And that's, that's good, that's dead flat. Good thing about this uh, uh, tight bond glue too is it only takes about an hour. Uh, if you use PVA, you have to leave it overnight. So it uh, does make the turnaround on these jobs a lot quicker. So what I'll need to do now is just sand all of that edge back there, just get rid of the glue line. Once again, this tight bond glue is good. It sands away quite easily without sort of getting all rubbery and gummed up. That section there is sanded dead flush now, and I'm just using 120 grit paper, but I'll come back to this later and do it with something finer. That's cleaned up quite nice. So with that joint line now cleaned up, the next piece of veneer that butts into that is going to make a really neat tight joint. I'm going to make up the rest of the veneer strip to go down this side, get that bonded on and at least this part, the, the flat part is done and it's locked in place and there's no need to worry about it. So putting the remaining strip of this veneer on the end of the clock frame now means bonding that down and getting that strip of veneer to conform to that curved shape and it's got to really press in tight with no possibility of getting any gaps. Now you recall I said I was going to use this piece of foam and I was going to use the bending ply and newspaper and clamps and all that sort of stuff. Well forget that. <laughs> I've had a better idea and uh, it involves this which I got for free from the bike shop down the road and it's just the, the tube from the inside of the bike tire. And what gave me the idea is that when I kept doing this by hand, I thought, well, what do you do? You, you hold it down and you stretch it around that curve. And the problem with this bending pie is that it doesn't stretch. I mean, you can, you can clamp it down, but what it tends to do is lift just here. So as you bend it, it wants to create a gap underneath. 
it needs to be more flexible, it needs to be stretchy, and that's what gave me the idea about using the rubber. And luckily when you split the bike tire or the bike tube, it comes out to be just wide enough to conform around that curve there. So that's the plan. So uh, well, what can go wrong? Okay, I'll put that block right over the, the joint line so it's sort of clamping on both sides of the joint and uh, that's going to help to stop the rubber from separating the joint as I pull that around. And by the way, if you're hearing a lot of noise outside, we've got sort of a, uh, leftover cyclonic winds at the moment from Cyclone Owen, which hit up North Queensland. So it's been as windy as all get out here today. Okay, so I just got this in the vise and that is just pulling down against that glue line there now. So I've got the rubber clamped and in theory all we have to do is just stretch this, wrap that round and somehow get a clamp on that. Okay. I reckon that's working. I'll just around the back there and I can see the glue line. Yep, that's bonded down really well. I might just put one more clamp there. Cool. All right, that's certainly easier than what I did before and uh, glad I thought of it. Well, I was all excited and I came down and took the rubber strap off that expecting to see it perfectly bonded and it hasn't. So you can see there's a, a gap there. I don't know what happened. It was sort of um, squeezing the glue out when I left it. But maybe the rubber has relaxed slightly or the glue has expanded the veneer. Not sure. But either way, that's a bit of a fail and it's, it's really disappointing. But uh, what I'll try to do is introduce some glue into that edge there and get the bending ply on it and just see if I can get that to bond down right on that edge there. It's sort of everywhere else it feels okay. Um, it should have worked, but it hasn't. Damn it. I'm starting to think that's what I should have done right from the get-go. Uh, I worked on the other one and uh, I just got a bit too clever for my own good but um, I can see I think it's closed up. And I guess the advantage of doing it this way is that you got that really rigid plywood and the ratchet strap has to compress that down onto that curve. The difficulty before was that you know you got wet glue everywhere and it's all slipping and sliding and it sort of gets messy um, but once you've got the two ends bonded, it's actually quite fairly straightforward. 
you can see on this side here it seems to be closed up so um, all we can do is hope for the best Okay, I think I got lucky there. That seems to be bonded all the way around that edge there now on both sides. So I had high hopes for that method with the rubber strip there, but it looks like I had to go back to the original idea to make that work. But anyway, I've saved that one. Well, I've just been around now giving that a fine sand all around that curve there and I've done all of the back and I've trimmed up all of the glue lines and it's looking good. I believe that I've got tight joints all the way around the periphery of that shape there. I've got no bubbles, no defects. So uh, it, it was a close thing. I did have a number of uh, issues that I resolved. If I had to summarize what I've learned from all of this, it is that you need to use some sort of a a resilient material between the veneer and a core. This uh, foam worked quite well. I tried a few other things but this seems to be what works the best. It's about uh, three to four millimeters thick. It doesn't stretch but it's got that sort of a texture in it which compresses quite well. The other thing is that you need to have a core which is capable of flexing around to that shape there but it still needs to provide sufficient pressure to compress the foam and therefore push the veneer hard against that curve. The um, bending ply worked really well on this but I, as I said earlier on you need to be able to get the flat bits of veneer on first and get those stuck down before you try and do the more difficult parts. That's about all for this episode. In the next one, I'm going to show you how I've done the front of the clock and this other curve here. And we're also going to look at doing the, the back on the clock, which is uh, also veneered. Uh, but it has to be machined to fit that opening there. So we'll have a look at that. So um, thanks for sticking with me on this one. Uh, I know it looked like a bit of a dog's breakfast, but um, I got there in the end. So that's all for now. I'll check you out on the next one and thanks for watching.